Are you managing your WordPress media library the right way? Has it gotten really big and bloated? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video because I recently had a client that had a media library that was almost five gigabytes in size and it was literally messing up his web hosting account and so we needed to shrink that. So let's talk about what we did. Okay, so I had a client, he had hired us to do some uh, tech service on his uh, site, on his membership site primarily, and pr what we're really working on is some stuff to split the membership site apart and really fine tune that thing so he can make more money with it. But we had an issue, and that was that his media library had gotten so big and bloated that I literally couldn't even create a staging site on his hosting account because it went over the amount of disk space that the host gave him, okay? And, and so I was like, well, that's a pretty rare thing. And so we went and looked and it come to find out his media library had grown to almost five gigabytes in size. It was actually 4.96 gigabyte all by itself, which is humongous. Just to give you an idea of comparison, the entire Blog Marketing Academy site, and I've been doing this for 12 years on this site, is only a little over a gigabyte in size all by itself. And, and I do have some clutter in my media library. So his media library alone was almost five times the size of my entire website. And so there was a lot going on in there. When I looked, he had a lot of really unoptimized images, a lot of PNG files when they really should have been JPEGs and things like that. So what we're gonna do here is I wanna give you just a few quick rules on how to maintain your media library so it doesn't get that big to begin with. And then we're gonna talk about some tools where you can clean it up because I did manage to shrink his library by about 45%. Um, I could have taken it further, but it gets to a certain point where you, cut, you have more important things to do. But we did solve the disk space issue and I shrunk it significantly. We shaved well over two gigabytes in size off of it. And I wanna talk about what we did. Okay, first, some rules to keep your media library managed to begin with. The first thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna use the correct image size formats to begin with. Now, here's the thing. Your Mac, and he was using a Mac, your Mac, if you're using one, of course, will take screenshots in PNG format by nature, okay? Now, uh, that's a really big image format. PNG is a great image format, but it's really one that you only want to use if you are using uh, something that has a transparent background behind it, okay? If you're using a photo, and most of the images that we put on our WordPress sites are photos, then I highly recommend that you use JPEG. JPEG is a much better compression, it's a much smaller file size, and it looks really good, okay? So do not use PNG format unless you've got a legitimate reason to use it. And that's primarily for a transparent image where you need an image to go over top of some colored background and actually have it look good and not granular and stuff like that. That's an important reason to use PNG. Otherwise, use JPEG. Now, in his case, we, sh we shaved a lot of file size off his media library by simply converting all of his old PNG files from that he took as screenshots on his Mac, and I moved them over to JPEG format. And I'll show you coming up here how we did that. But that's the first thing. Definitely use JPEG. Uh, PNG, only for transparent. And then for the GIF format, you pretty much are only gonna use the GIF format if you have some kind of an animated meme type of a deal, or if it's just like a tiny little icon or something. But otherwise, it's pretty much all going to be JPEG. The next thing is gonna be to reduce the size of your images to begin with before you even upload them. Now, a lot of times we will upload photos and sometimes you take your photos on your phone or on a DSLR camera or something like that and even these phones can take really large images that can be 3,000 to 5,000 pixels wide. They're like big massive images that you can blow up, right? And what a lot of people do is they mistakenly will just upload those things to the media library just raw. Like you just take them out of the photo library or out of wherever you manage your photos and you just upload it full blast. And so what happens is it's about a 5,000 pixel image and it's probably a good two or three megabytes in file size. 
And you definitely never want to upload something like that, okay? Because you're never gonna display the photo that large on your website. And even though you can shrink it and make it look good visually on the site, your browser is still gonna be loading up that big honker image, even if it looks smaller than that. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that image and you wanna shrink it before you even upload it to the media library. I typically will shrink my photos down to about 1,000 pixels in width uh, before I will ever upload them because I pretty much never will display an image on my site bigger than that, okay? So you should be doing the exact same thing. The next thing is to use an image optimization plugin. Now, there are a number of plugins that you can install on WordPress, and they will auto-optimize images for you as you upload them. Now, they're not necessarily always going to shrink them. So if you upload some big 5,000 pixel image like what we were talking about, it'll optimize that. But really, you should manually shrink that thing first. But then, even if you optimize an image on your computer before you upload it, you can still usually eke out even better, smaller file size, okay? And so there's a number of plugins out there that will do this for you automatically so that once the file gets to your server, um, it will, you, it'll shrink it. And it doesn't look any different. It's the exact same image, it's just now smaller. Now the plugin that I personally use is called Imagify. It's really good. Um, it's got a free level of account which will totally do the job for almost everybody, including me. Now if you wanna go back and time and you want to bulk optimize all of your old images, they've got one-time bandwidth plans available that you can purchase. And uh, usually the, the, the lower end, I think it's $9.99, the lower end plan will be more than adequate. And you can optimize your entire library and get it all up to snuff with this thing. But it's a good plugin. Now there's several others out there. You can go and do your own research, but definitely use an image optimization plugin. Next thing is you wanna use file names and file descriptions that actually make sense. See, when you're actually using your media library inside of WordPress, you have the ability to search it, okay? Now the thing is, the, in order to search it, it's not searching the files. Like if you upload a picture of a flower, it's, it's not like WordPress knows it's a flower. So the only way that it's going to be able to search those things and do anything is if you enter information that actually makes sense into the fields in your media library. So the, the title, the description, the caption, if you ever use captions on your site, the alt tags, things like that. Now there's a couple things that this will do for you. One is that it will make your media library actually useful because you can search for stuff and reuse images. The second thing is that when you insert those images into a blog post, it'll take the alt tag and the title tag and the file name that should have keywords in it and it can actually help you SEO the post, which will actually help you with traffic, okay? So I, I, I encourage you to name your file name something that makes sense, and then actually take the time to enter a title and a description for the image, because it's going to help you with your SEO, and it's gonna also help your media library be a lot more useful down the road. Lastly, do not upload big media files to your media library. Sometimes we want to host video on our site or an MP3 audio, but I really don't recommend that you upload these to your WordPress media library. For videos, these are massive, massive files for one, okay? And your web host wasn't really designed to do stuff like that. And so what you need to be doing is using YouTube or Vimeo or uploading them onto Amazon S3 or something like that. Do not put video files in your WordPress media library. Secondly, uh, is the mp3 files or any type of audio um, it's while you can put them in there and you can host them and they're not going to be as bad as a, a movie because they're not as big it's still not ideal to put them in your media library so what you would probably want to do is use a podcast host like libsyn or something like that and just offload those things don't put them into the wordpress media library so really you should only be using the wordpress media library and the file system um, as for images. That's really what's best in there. Or I, you know, on my membership site, I will put PDF files and documents, or if you wanna give away a lead magnet, feel free to put that in your media library. It's not a massive file, but the big stuff really should be hosted from someplace else. Okay, so let's talk about what I did to shrink my client's media library by about 45%. 
Okay, so we're going to quickly go over this, but the first thing I always want to mention here is that you want to back up your site before you do stuff like this, okay? Now, in my client's case, we literally had an issue where the backups were a problem because so much disk space was being used up by his media library, okay? And so you'll, you might have to work with the situation that you've got. Most likely, you have not cluttered up your your the, your available disk space on your hosting account. If you do, sometimes you could just go get more disk space from your host, and you'll solve the problem temporarily, and then they can always shrink it back when you're done. Whatever needs to be done. But one way or the other, I do recommend that you back up the site first because you are going to be messing directly with the image file that are on the, the, the hard drive of your server, essentially. Okay, the first thing that I did, and this was by far the most effective thing that I did for him, was I used this plugin simply called PNG to JPEG. Okay, very simple, very uncreative name. But that it does exactly what it says. It takes all the PNG files and that are in your media library, and you can convert the existing ones to the JPEG format. And so you can see there's a tab here inside the plugin. Now, all these are the ones that I left alone. So that's a really important point is that it's not like it's going to force you to convert every PNG file, but what you can do is go through and actually select the ones that are just full on photos and you can move those over to the JPEG format. He had a lot of them were, that were similar to this one here that was a just basically a default PNG file taken as a screenshot on the Mac, okay? And they're really big. First of all, they're photos. They don't need to be in the PNG format. JPEG would be much smaller file size. And it had these really weird file names. Now, I have not gone and corrected all these file names because it, it would just take too darn long. Um, but I did convert the hell out of all these things to JPEG. And if we go over to the general tab, you can see that on his system, we went back and converted 904 images and just with those alone, we shaved 687 megabytes off of his media library. Now, that's not even the full story here because when we, this was only the original size. When we actually go and removed all the alternative uh, image sizes of these PNG files as well, we shaved like about two gigabytes of file size off the media library, essentially with this one operation. I mean, it was it was massive, and it was probably unique to his case, and the fact that he had so many screenshots, uh, and uh, and and they were being uploaded raw, right from the Mac in, in PNG format. And so we fixed the problem with this simple plugin called the PNG to JPEG plugin. The next thing that I did was I went and I used the Imagify plugin and we went back in time in the media library and we did a bulk optimization of the whole darn thing, okay? Uh, so we went ahead and purchased a just a one-time bandwidth plan. He still has quite a bit of it left over, actually. Uh, and we were able to, to basically, now that we've got all those JPEG files, we were able to create really optimized versions of them. Also, any other JPEG files that he had originally uploaded we were able to optimize those as well and shrink even more of the those images down to just a smaller, leaner version. So the, we use the Imagify plugin. There are other options out there. Uh, I link to them below in the blog post so you can actually go and check those things out for yourself. There's really no shortage of them because image optimization is a pretty standard thing to do inside of WordPress. But we used, or I used, Imagify and we went back in time and bulk optimized them and then from then on, the free Imagify plan will do the job just fine for him. Okay, the next thing that I did was we used the Regenerate Thumbnails plugin. It's called Regenerate Thumbnails Advanced, apparently. Um, and it's a free plugin, and it does exactly what it says. It will go back and it will regenerate the thumbnails that are automatically generated by WordPress. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that WordPress is auto-generating various sizes of every image that you upload. And it's doing this automatically, and there's pretty much nothing 
to do the stop it. Okay. And, and so it's, and it's also quite frankly, not something that you really need to think about that much. Now in his case, in my client's case, he was uploading a lot of images that were just way too large. And so it, we actually were able to solve some issues by going back and regenerating the proper thumbnail sizes. Okay. But the other thing that this thing does is that uh, the, the, I forgot what version of WordPress that this started in, but WordPress will generate these big honker images of 1536 and 2048. He had a, uh, has a, uh, uh, D, a custom one that's being that put on here by something that he's using for Infusionsoft. Um, and that's a bit important point is that sometimes plugins and themes will call for their own custom image sizes. Now, the other thing is that sometimes you will stop using that plugin or stop using some theme that was calling for a, a custom image size. And, and so WordPress is no longer generating them, but yet, those files are still sitting back there. Okay, so one of the cool things that this generate thumbnail uh, plugin will do is allow you to go back and delete the old ones, okay? And it's a combination of a couple of things. First of all, you notice here that we check off the ones that we want to actually regenerate. And these thumbnail, medium, medium, large, and large are the pretty much the standard ones that WordPress does. But we keep these and any custom ones that we don't want anymore, we keep them unchecked. And then over here on this side, one of our options is this one, delete unselected thumbnails, okay? And what that will do is because I did not select these, it's going to go in there and just hose them, okay? It's going to delete them from the system, okay? And that will actually save a whole lot of uh, space, especially if you went for a long time generating all these things and you know you never use them, um, you know? And so let's just clear them off the hard drive of the server and you no longer are going to clutter up the thing and clutter up the disk space. Okay, and there's one final thing that I did not do for him, but you could do if you're in this situation, uh, is that you can move files from your standard web host and you can offload them to a remote service such as Amazon S3. And you can actually still use them and manage them inside the WordPress media library. It's just that the files themselves are somewhere else, okay? They're gonna be over on Amazon S3 or something like that. And below, I will link to some tutorials and stuff to help you out with that. I don't want to take the time here to walk you through how to do it. I also didn't do it for this client, but it was primarily for the sake of time. Now he only had like one or two video files in the media library, thank God, okay? Um, and he's pretty good at putting everything on YouTube, so that's great. He does have a bunch of audio files in there and they were of the MP3 format and it's not ideal to have them inside the WordPress media library. They really should be either on Amazon S3 or Libsyn or something like that. But again, if this is one of the things you always got to keep in mind is that you can spend a lot of time trying to reach perfection when it comes to shrinking these things down as much as humanly possible. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to apply the 80-20 rule to this bad boy and move on because we have more important things to be doing to grow our businesses than sitting there trying to shrink the size of a media library. And so the way it is at this point, I was able to get his media library shrunk by about 45%. I believe we brought it down to 2.76 gigabytes. We started off at 4.96. So basically we shaved 2.2 gigabytes off the file size of his media library. And we were able to solve the disk space problem on his host. He can now create staging sites without uh, you know, stretching out his account to the limit. And, um, and we can move on with bigger and better things. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful in terms of how to manage your own media library and then also how to shrink it if you've sort of been exercising some bad habits up until now. You can actually shrink it, get it, you know, kind of cleaned up and then start applying those five rules from here on out and your media library will be fine, okay? You're always going to have some stuff back there that you don't use. WordPress is auto-generating different image sizes back, back there and chances are most of them you don't use. And I really wouldn't worry about it. Unless it's becoming a major problem on stretching your hosting account beyond its limits, that's really the only time you really need to think about it all that much. Um, and hopefully this video gave you some tips. All right, I'll see you next time.